engine rally. Here the visitor can come and view these magnificent machines in steam and smell once again hot oil and coal smoke. Amongst the engines standing around are some examples of steam lorries like this excellent Foden of 1914. seen ticking over out of gear, pumping water from the tanks into the boilers, which gives an idea of the smooth operation of these huge working parts. comes by steam tanker, helping to keep everything authentic. up to the moment when the, when the engines enter the arena to keep them spick and span and keep the works well oiled. Amongst the static exhibits is a magnificent thrashing drum. These used to be towed around the farms at harvest time, spending a little time at each and thrashing the wheat from the chaff. Most were used for traction engines, some did use stationary engines like this resplendent Ruston of Proctor. Where the whistle signifies the start of the rally. The arena gradually fills as the engines come up to join the Grand Parade. showing us that despite their years they can still show us their paces.
week after the rally back at Cavey, the engines are still coming back from the field and it's the monthly open day. The rectory garden is busy with visitors where, as an extra attraction, the brooder organ is here this week. <laughs> traction engine is bringing back the caravan. Towing, however, is not the prime function of a traction engine. The task around which the traction engine was designed will be revealed later. Bagnall Pixie is in steam and visitors can travel on the train to experience what narrow gauge railways are all about. through her paces for the visitors. But making black smoke, once again, is not its prime function. it's time to clear away, drop the fires and prepare to relax as we are finally able to observe the prime function of the agricultural traction engine. 